My name is Rima. I'm a mother, I love the ocean, I love healthy food, and I really like making people happy. I live on the North Shore of Oahu with my husband, Mark, and my three-year-old son, Curran. You could say I'm one of those people who doesn't really have a profession. I dabble in a lot of things. I mean, you have to to make ends meet and to be able to live on the North Shore like we do. We don't live here because we want to work all day in an office in Honolulu, sit in hours of traffic in either direction, and miss half of the kid's life in the meantime. My husband works about a mile away from this house. He works for a surfboard shaver who builds boards at the Wailua Sugar Mill. He rides his bike to work, he works like 30 hours a week, and he's surrounded by what he loves, surfboards. My son goes to school less than a mile away from this house. He goes to this tiny little school full of tiny little people. The kids spend the better half of their day outside playing and breathing fresh, beautiful air surrounded by green nature, and they're looked after by the most loving people. A lot of times, after work, I just go pick him up on my beach cruiser, and we sometimes just ride around town for a while before going home. That, or we just go straight to the beach. You could say life here couldn't get any better. The only struggle we encounter on a regular basis is that age-old revolving question of how do we live this life and still make money? This is my life and a food truck. Four months ago, I quit my full-time job with the intent to pursue my dream and start a small family business. With a small loan and some money saved, we will attempt to build a food truck from the ground up here on the North Shore of Oahu. This is how it all got started. I moved to Hawaii about eight years ago. I showed up, I stayed with my sister for a couple of days, found a place on Waikiki Beach, had six grand in my pocket in cash, and just planned on spending it and surfing nonstop. Long story short, I met my husband about five weeks after that. So I decided to shack up here on the islands. We lived in Waikiki for those first few years, and we had my son. My name is Curran, K.O. Salad. Uh, I keep my mom awake all night, even though for like a week I was a big boy and slept through the night. Last night I decided to be a fussy pants and keep her awake all night. So it's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, sometimes I'm a really good baby especially when other people are around. And then behind closed doors, I secretly um, am a maybe doctor not, evil. Yeah, I'm not such a big baby. And when my son was about one and a half, we knew that we were gonna have to move once he started walking. We, at the time, lived in this cute little one-story bungalow that unfortunately was on like this fast-moving three-lane highway. And we figured, since we were gonna move anyway, might as well just take the plunge and move to the North Shore. So we found a, a little one bedroom right across the street here, and, uh, and we moved. Moving to the North Shore wasn't that easy. It was actually a struggle for me, because at that time, my husband had to quit his job because he was working in town and there was no way he was gonna commute. I decided to take on the responsibility of bearing the weight of paying the bills for the entire household. At the time, I had been working in action sports broadcasting, which is a really cool job. And I really enjoyed the arena at which I was working in and felt really satisfied by what I was doing. As soon as we moved to the North Shore, I kind of put on a new hat and started taking on more responsibility. That just added a lot more stress to my plate, and uh, I kind of got into this spiral of unhappiness where I was stressed out because I had to pay the bills. I was taking on more responsibility that maybe I didn't necessarily want, um, but just doing it anyway because I knew I had to. Then kind of being secretly miserable inside. Two days before Christmas, I was working on Excel spreadsheets at my house late at night before my family was getting ready to go on a little staycation in Waikiki. And it was at that moment I genuinely reaffirmed to myself I didn't want to be doing accounting, 
I didn't want to be entering invoices and I didn't want to be working with Excel. I found through that process that I really wasn't capitalizing on my strengths. I'm creative, artistic, pretty good with people. I wasn't really spending that much time doing those things. I'd kind of shifted my role into doing more administrative stuff. And as much as it was a great experience, uh, through the process I realized it wasn't for me. So after that Christmas realization, I was pretty much ready to make a massive change in my life. And I decided that if I was gonna do something, I was gonna do something so drastic, something that would take me out of it to where I couldn't go back even if I wanted to. So that's when I dreamed up the scheme of doing the coffee truck. So after February, I just made up my mind. I called up my husband one day, I was in the car, and I just told him, I'm gonna start a coffee truck. And he was supportive. It's kind of how the whole thing got up and rolling. Once we had decided that that's what we were going to do, we started shopping on Craigslist. Pretty quickly, we found this beautiful gem right behind me here. It was located in Compton, of all places, and it was formerly an ice cream truck. So it was like listed for 2,700 bucks. And I convinced my brother and my mother's husband to go to Compton and pick it up for me and get it to the port to ship it over to Hawaii. So like $5,000 later, we have this coffee truck that came straight out of Compton and it was covered in yellow and green and blue paint. And there was this crazy face on the back that was holding an ice cream cone and it was called Chopsicles Popsicles. But it was cute. Next step was to sandblast it and get the paint off of it. So we commissioned a guy to come over and bring his sandblasting rig right here in our driveway and uh, just hammer away with tons and tons of gnarly sand. And that lasted for about 20 minutes. We got shut down. The cops came and told us we couldn't do it because it was just too loud. So next thing you know, we hopped in uh, the old van and decided to just drive it clear across the island to the industrial area where the guy who had the sand blasting said we could blast over there. Next thing you know, I'm driving this ice cream truck that is unregistered, doesn't have Hawaii plates, uninsured, and as far as I'm concerned, probably not extremely roadworthy. Definitively, it did not have working windshield wipers, and not to mention that there's bullet holes in the glass. It was one of the sketchier experiences of uh, my Hawaiian life. Uh, but we made it, and the guy stripped all the paint off. And along with the paint, a lot of the body came off too. There's a bunch of holes in it now. You know, after the experience, hindsight is 2020. Looking back, I don't think I would have done that. I had no idea that sandblasting was gonna just annihilate the body of the truck as much as it did. I'd say that that was a little bit disappointing and quite a bit of an oversight, but we were still willing to work with it and keep moving. Once we brought it back here, the next step was to just continue working on the build out of the truck. But my husband was offered a full-time job working with a great surfboard shaper just down the street, not even a mile away. So he had to say yes, of course. I mean, at the time, you know, I'm tra transitioning out of my work and trying to work on this thing and free up my time. It just made sense for us to say yes to him getting more full-time work. So along with him taking this job went my free labor and my assistance with building this truck. Still, I had been spending my time procuring more equipment. We had gotten ourselves a coffee machine, this amazing La Marzocco. We found Vitamixes, got ourselves some generators, got myself uh, approved and certified to safely handle food, built a website, did a bunch of stuff, but I didn't do anything on the truck. So yeah, the truck's just been sitting for like three months. I've also been working on a little bit of other stuff, 
just to make extra money and to try to keep some cash coming in. At this point, we're just shy of $20,000 invested into the business. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna keep my momentum going with building this truck because it's a little bit past my ability to be working on the build of the truck, you know, getting all the rust off and painting and, and building the interior of it. There's half of a business built with a ton of potential. The most important process for me throughout this entire journey has been a lot of self-discovery, having to balance my, my life with my son, picking him up from school and spending time with him and also to ask my husband for permission before just making decisions has been also a lot of the learning experience for me. No matter what, I'm going to keep working at it and I'm gonna make this thing happen. I'm gonna get this truck on the road. However, I'm not sure how I'm going to get to that point just yet. So, we'll see. On the next episode of My Life in a Food Truck, we say out with the old and in with the new. Mark has to drive out to the sketchy part of town to make a cash deal for a different truck that might just not be worth the asking price. We put the old truck up for sale with the hopes of recouping at least some of our initial investment. And I continue the hunt for equipment that isn't going to make us broke. Stay tuned for episode two of My Life and a Food Truck.